So, you've seen trailers of East End Nordics, and you like how it looks, and you're interested in the series now, but you're not sure what Ease is or what a good starting point is? Well, don't worry, I'm here to help you with that. I've been playing Ease ever since the PSP release of Oath and Felgana back in 2010, and since then, I've played at least one version of every game in this franchise to date, and it's become easily my favorite action RPG series of all time, with the satisfying gameplay and exceptional musical score. With the upcoming release of East 10, you might be wondering if it's a good place to start, or if you should play an older game in the series. So I'm here to give you a brief overview of what Ease is, what the chronological order is, good entry points into the series, the different styles of Ease, and what you should expect from the series. Just a heads up, I will be trying my best to avoid as many spoilers as possible so you don't have the games ruined for you before you even start, and I will only be focusing on the newest release of each game in the series as there have been several re-releases and retcons within the series. Before we jump into that though, if you love Ease or any JRPGs for that matter, be sure to give the video a like smash that subscribe button and tell me where you first heard of the Ease series. Anyways, let's jump into it and get to talking all about Ease. So what even is Ease? Well, Ease is an action RPG series by Nihon Falcom, more famously known for the Trails or Kiseki series. With the first game coming out for the PC Engine in 1987, and the newest release, Ease 10 Nordics, out on October 25th, Ease is one of the longest running action RPG series out there. Ease primarily focuses on our crimson haired adventurer, Adol Kristen, with one exception, as he explores various ruins and solves ancient mysteries. Often accompanied by his partner Dogi, it is said that Adol left journals documenting all of his adventures, and there are over 100 of these journals, and each game or adventure is told from the point of view of someone reading these journals. Now that we know what Ease is, and what it's all about, let's get into the various games, and where a good jumping in point might be for you, personally. Ease 1 and 2, originally released for the PC-88 PC Engine in 1987, currently available on PC as Ease 1 and 2 Chronicles Plus, chronologically the second games in the series. These were the first games in the series to be released, and I am grouping these together because they are the only games in the series with a direct sequel. Ease 1 and 2 were originally supposed to be one game, but it proved to be too long for one release back in 1987. This is the only modern release in the series that still maintains the bump system of combat. Where, instead of swinging your sword, you merely walk into enemies to do damage, preferably at an angle or the back, as walking headfirst into enemies will end our hero's adventure before it even starts. Taking place in Asteria, Adol needs to uncover the mystery of the Books of Ease and find out their secrets. I would say Ease 1 and 2 are an okay entry point into the series, the gameplay is relatively simple, the exploration is plentiful, and the games can be completed within 10 hours, so it's not too much of a time sink. But as the games and its mechanics are dated, along with Ease 1 having the most frustrating final boss in the entire series, it could be a hard sell. If you can get the hang of the bump system, I think it's something that you'll really enjoy. Not to mention, seeing Adol's initial adventure can really give you a base of what the series has to offer. Ease 5, Lost Kefin, Kingdom of Sand, released in 1995 for the Super Famicom. Ease 5, taking place in the land of Zandria, is the only game in the series not to get a remake or a localization in the West. However, there is a fan translation out if you really want to play it. Though, I feel like a remake is on the way. East 5 is commonly referred to as the Black Sheep, and for good reason. It feels honestly like it's an East title in name only. The combat feels like Zelda from Timu. The mechanics feel incomplete, such as magic that is all but useless. The music is bland, and the game is incredibly easy. In fact, only three months after the initial release, 
it got a re-release featuring an expert mode, just to make things a little bit more difficult. Honestly, ES5 is forgettable in every aspect of the series, but I feel the game should still be experienced, if only so you can say you've played the worst game in an amazing series. Not to mention, you're looking at less than a 12 hour playthrough at worst, so if anything, it's a good game to play between upcoming new releases. It's nothing special, but the story that takes place actually does get referenced later on in the series, so it isn't a huge loss. It's a decent starting point, if only because the series only gets better from here, and it would be incredibly difficult to go back to a game like this if you've played the others in the series before it. Ease 6, Ark of Napishtim, released for the PC in 2005, but later on ported to mobile, PS2, and PSP. A free MMORPG was actually released based off of Ease 6 for mobile as well. It wasn't that great, it isn't canon, but hey, it exists. Ease 6 takes place in the land of Kanan, and is the first in the Napishtim engine, or platformer style as I like to call it. This is probably my personal favorite style of Ease game, and while Ease 6 was the first game in the style, and doesn't have all the kinks ironed out in the engine, it is still very high up on my list of favorite Ease titles. The Napishtim engine is quite a bit faster paced in the bump system plays like a classic action RPG with three different swords giving different abilities, which makes it a fantastic entry point, and it's actually kind of aggressively gory with its enemies, just exploding in blood and bones randomly. E6 probably has my favorite soundtrack in the entire series, which is a very high praise, as the entire series has some incredible soundtracks. Again, E6 is very short. At only about 13 to 15 hours for a playthrough, it makes for a short and fun adventure worth playing through. And if you really enjoy it, after you play this game on PC, seek out and play the PS2 version. That port has some of the most hilarious CG cutscenes and voice acting to ever exist. They're pure nightmare fuel, but I can't help but laugh every time I watch them. <laughs> So you're the red-haired Adam. The name's Ladakh. So how about it? Let's discover the edge of the world together. Huh? Ease Origin, originally released on PC in 2006, now available on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Ease Origin is the only game in the series that doesn't feature Adol as the main character, taking place 700 years before the events of Ease 1 and 2. Instead of Adol, because, you know, he wasn't born yet, you have Unica Tova, Hugo Fact, and a mystery third character after completing the game with the other two characters. Ease Origin is done in the Napishtim engine. However, at this point, it plays a lot faster with new abilities added, and it feels incredibly smooth. This is an okay entry point, but could be a little underwhelming as there are no towns, no real side quests, and you are just climbing a tower so everything feels more or less samey. On top of that, it takes three playthroughs to see the full story, it's still a phenomenal game, and anyone who enjoys action RPGs is sure to enjoy it, but as you are in a very enclosed area, the exploration that Ease is known for isn't all there, and it's incredibly linear. With that being said, it's great to get the lore of the series. I would suggest having a few games under your belt, or at the very least, Ease 1 and 2, so you can appreciate the lore presented in Ease Origin. Just know that Ease Origin does spoil Ease 1 and 2, and the vice versa is true as well. Ease, the Oath and Felgana, initially released for the PC in 2005, later on released for PSP, and in 2025 coming to the West on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Switch. Oath and Felgana takes place in Dogi's home country and is actually a remake of Ease 3 Wanderers from Ease for the Super Nintendo, which actually almost killed Ease in the West. It was that bad, so it isn't a surprise that it's been retconned from the canon. Oath also uses the Napishtim engine, and feels the most refined to a point where it's almost a borderline metroidvania, 
you have three different elements, and as you gain these elements and level them up, you get new abilities that double as exploration tools. Oath and Feldana also introduce the boost meter, a meter that when filled will double your strength and defense, and you don't suffer any knockbacks. As this was my entry to the E series, which probably feeds into why I like it so much, I can absolutely say that this game is the perfect entry point into the E's franchise. Or rather, it would be, but some bosses can be rough, and there are points in the game where it's a bit nonsensical and isn't all that clear on where you need to go next. However, with that being said, East the Oath and Felgana is really just a great game, and I would suggest it to anyone looking to get into the East series. It helps that next year there is an enhanced remaster coming out, and I actually reviewed the Japanese version on the channel as one of the first videos I ever did, so check that out if you want more of an in-depth review on the game. Ease 7, originally released in 2010 for the PSP and then later ported to PC in 2017. Ease 7 takes place in Altago and introduced the party system of Ease as well as attack types. No longer is Adol traveling alone. You can build a party of three different characters and most importantly, this is the only Ease game where Doki is a full party member. This is honestly a crime. Praise be to the wall crusher Doki. Anyways. As I said, East 7 introduced attack types. Each specific enemy type is weak to a certain attack type, which is determined by the character attacking. For example, if you're fighting a flying type enemy, shooting them with Aisha's arrows would be more effective than trying to hit them with Dogi's fists. This is personally my least favorite style of these, but it's still enjoyable enough. Entry-wise, this is one of the games that I would not suggest starting with. While it probably has one of the best stories in the series, I would consider it the hardest East title. Not to say it isn't worth starting with, you can still enjoy it, but just keep in mind that you may have a harder time getting through it. The last thing I want is for someone to start with E7 and get turned off from the series. In the East community, 7 is generally talked about as being the bottom of people's lists when compared to other games in the series. This is something I don't understand. It gets so much hate, but it's a lot of fun, and while it isn't the very best, it's still worth playing. Ease Memories of Salsetta, originally released in 2012 for the PlayStation Vita, and later ported to the PC and PlayStation 4. Ease Memories of Salsetta is a canon remake of Ease 4 Mask of the Sun and Ease 4 Dawn of Ease, and it takes place in the land of Salsetta. See what I mean by there's tons of different releases in this series for the same games? This is probably my least favorite party system Ease game. It's not terrible, but everything just feels so uninspired and bland. Some characters are ridiculously overtuned and powerful, where others are just completely useless in comparison. In addition, the story is cliché and doesn't really do much for the game. Duren is a pathetic replacement for Dogi, and the characters are some of the least memorable in the series. This whole game just feels like they rushed it out. This might sound like I'm roasting it left, right, and center, but it just is incredibly unremarkable, and probably the most passable Ease game. That isn't to say you shouldn't play it, but I do feel as if you should temper your expectations and realize you're in for a subpar experience. With all of this being said, it's probably quite clear, but I don't think that this is the best entry point in the series. Should you play it eventually? Absolutely. But just don't expect it to blow you away. It's still fun, but nowhere near the quality of most other Ease titles. Ease 8 Lacrimosa of Donna, originally released for the Vita in 2016 and later released for the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, PC, Amazon Luna, and Google Stadia? Or Xbox being left out. Anyways, Ease 8, taking place in the Isle of Saren, is what I would consider the most perfect of Ease titles. While not everything is perfect, the pacing comes to mind. But everything else excels so well that even the lore points don't matter. The exploration is fantastic, 
Even while you are contained to an island, you can explore as much or as little as you like. You can find other passengers that shipwrecked on the island, and they all have their own stories and reasons for wanting to make it off this island. The combat is some of the best. The music is fantastic. This is not an understatement. Eclusian Dance and Sunshine Coastline are peak Falcom. Can you tell I really like this game? It's up there as one of my favorites in the series. While I want to suggest this as an entry point, it might not be the best choice. Not only because this is at the point where the series starts to get a little bit longer with each game, these eight last around 40 to 60 hours depending how much exploration you do or don't do, but if you play Ease 8 as your entry point into the series, you might have an unreasonably high expectation for the rest of the series. However, this is probably the most successful game in the series because as it isn't too difficult and the exploration isn't overwhelming. That being said, once you get a few Ease titles under your belt, be sure to jump into Ease 8 because it's something any action JRPG fan needs to play. Ease 9 Monstrum Nox. Originally released in 2019 for the PlayStation 4, and later ported to the PlayStation 5, Nintendo Switch, PC, and Google Stadia. So here we are, at the end of the current timeline for Ease. Ease 9 Monstrum Nox is the final game chronologically, and is a bit different as far as Ease goes. So the main theme of Ease is exploration and adventure, and Ease 9 takes place entirely within the city of Balduk. While there are catacombs and sewers to explore, and eventually you get to leave the city, you feel almost as if you're a caged rat for most of the game. Ease 9 did introduce gifts, which were traversal abilities depending on characters, such as running up walls, zip lining to predetermined points, or being able to shadow step under low walls. They're fun, but still very limited and situational. Being the final game in the timeline, Ease 9 is very much so a game for the fans of the series. At various points throughout the game, it makes callbacks to various games in the series. For example, there's one point where a certain NPC basically calls on the souls of girls from past Ease titles and speaks to Adol. This is a nice callback, but would be completely lost on someone who hasn't played previous games in the series before. For this reason, this is the only game in the series I would absolutely not suggest as a first game in the series. You can still play it first, and it is a self-contained story, but without playing previous games in the series, you would miss out on a ton of easter eggs and references and wouldn't appreciate it nearly as much. So here we are at East 10 Nordics, the newest release in the series. I won't go too far into Ease 10, I just want to briefly talk about it based on the information that we have. So Ease 10 Nordics takes place after Ease 2, but before Ease Memories of Salsetta, featuring a younger Adol Kristen. When Adol is on his way to Salsetta, he hears of a legend in Obelia Gulf and gets distracted in true Adol fashion. Boy is absolutely a sucker for a local legend. East 10 uses a modified party system that gets rid of the attack types, but focuses only on a dual protagonist system with team combo attacks. Scheduled to be released on October 25th, 2024, East 10 will be here very shortly, so keep an eye out as I will be putting out a review for this game once I get the chance. I'm incredibly excited to play East 10 as it looks to be fantastic. And I love Norse mythology, so a game based on Norse mythology is right down my alley. Not to mention naval combat looks spectacular. I cannot wait to boat all around the Obelia Gulf. So there we have it. 10 Ease games and 10 starting points in the series. Each has their positives as well as their negatives. And hey, if you're someone that would rather play the games in chronological order, that order is right here. If I've convinced and introduced even a single person to the world of Eats, and raised your interest to embrace the adventures of Adol Kristen as he grows as an adventurer, I will deem this video a success. Do you know what game you want to start the Eats series with now? Or if you've played Eats before, what was the first game that introduced you to the series and did it make you an instant fan? Let me know in the comments below 
And if you enjoyed this video and want more ease content, along with other JRPGs, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ding that notification bell for more quality JRPG lists and reviews. This has been Shanky, thanks so much for watching, and as always, have a wonderful day.